joined from London by MF Global uh, Pharmaceuticals Analyst Justin Smith. Justin has a buy rating on Roche stock. Uh, thanks so much, Justin, for, uh, for joining us. Now, uh, a lot at stake here for Roche. Do you think they're going to make any headway in being able to get this, this basically this, this ban by the FDA, getting that, that, uh, that repealed? I, I think it's probably going to be a struggle. Uh, I mean, certainly, I've, in my experience of being an analyst, I've never seen a company be able to erase the kind of wide vote we had at the advisory committee 12 months ago. But I think certainly, you know, th th this has never happened before. We're in uncharted waters, and I think certainly the fact that FDA is willing to even engage mm -hmm. in a two-day hearing suggests, you know, the probability is not zero here that the drug gets to stay on the market. Um, certainly, I found it very interesting listening to the first hour or so of the hearing, the, uh, the level of emotion going on there so yeah. I wouldn't say it's a complete impossibility but you know we are in uncharted territories here and, and the FDA didn't have to have this hearing but given the long odds and it sounds like long odds to you Justin I mean do you, is this really where you think the company should be putting its cash here on this uh, drug? yeah I mean it, yeah, yeah I think so I mean you know let's always remember this is an industry with an incredibly long life cycle and a lot of the money that you know enabled this drug to get on the market in breast cancer has already been spent um, I think they have a strong case here. I mean, you know, we can argue the odds between progression fee survival, overall survival endpoints, but at the end of the day, that this is a drug. And until the advisory committee 12 months ago, it, it was a drug that was very widely used in the in the kind of chemotherapy-specific segment where the drug was approved. It had a 90% market share. So there's there's clearly doctors and patients out there who think this drug works. Mm. And I, I don't think Russia kind of uh, wasting shareholders' capital here by by going to this hearing. I'm just wondering here, is this going to have a chilling effect on other drug makers? This is going to, uh, you know, uh, discourage them from developing drugs for cancer. Sure. Um, I think that's a very valid question. I think how I would counter that is to say, you know, particularly in metastatic or late-stage cancer, which is the subject of this hearing, the, the unmet need is still very, very high. You know, I've been pretty amazed in the kind of 10, 12 years I've been covering this sector. It's still, despite all the billions of R&D dollars have been spent in that time, that the level of unmet need in late-stage cancer is still incredibly high. Mm -hmm. So I think the FDA have to be very careful not to try and not to disincentivize other companies to, to go after this. The these, these cancer diseases because the unmet need is still so, so high. Uh, Justin, if, you know, by this long chance, Roche was able to prevail, I mean, would it really be able to make up some of the lost sales that it's already had uh, from this FDA, uh, you know, from the FDA decision? Sure. I mean, I think one of the, the great things about your healthcare system in the U.S. is particularly with cancer, the, the reimbursement system gives a great deal of flexibility to the, to the doctors. So I, I think even after today or tomorrow, if the FDA were, FDA were to allow the drug to stay on the market, I, I think you'd see a pretty quick recovery in the breast cancer sales of this product. Uh, Are you it, expecting insurers to continue? Oh, sorry. To no, jump go ahead, Are you expecting insurers to continue with this? Ensuring this? I, I think so, yeah, I think so. I mean, certainly when you, you look at the kind of meltdown of the product, it's probably too strong a word in the last 12 months, months or so, it's been a pretty benign erosion of the breast cancer sales of this product. And it, the reason for that being that, you know, insurance companies have been sort of you know, hesitant to fully withdraw the indication. So I, I think at the end of the day, we, we haven't gone from 100 to zero here. We've gone from 100 to about sort of 50. Uh, I think if, if the green light comes Roche's way in tomorrow, you, you'd be able to recover those those lost 50 of sales pretty quickly, I think. Justin, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Justin Smith, MF thank Global you. Pharmaceuticals.